Hello, welcome to Scratch Theory Printing. In this video, I got something from Devil's Design. Let's scratch to this project. My K1 Max has been printing very bad lately, and here I will show you a print that I was printing. So I was printing this piece for my car, and as you can see here, down here, it looks pretty okay. But as it goes up here, you can see that it is, you know, under extrusion and it just looks really bad so this was toward the front of the 3d printer and this was towards the back of the 3d printer same goes for the first layer the first layer is very bad up here and then down here it is a little bit better this is tpu and i just see that the layers are not stacking well on top of each other and not quite sure what's going on but then I did realize that I think it may be my extruder. So that's when I bought this new extruder from Devil's Design. It looks really amazing on the video that they show on YouTube. So let's just get this unboxing and put it on the Kill Max. Wow, look at that. So nicely wrapped. The box, look at the box. The box is so smaller than I thought. I thought the box was gonna be bigger. Oh, look at that. So here we have all the accessories for this new extruder from Devil's Design. This is the Cyclop Devil's Design version of the extruder. And it works for the KO Max. Also Triangle Lab, all these companies combined together. And here is the motor. Look at that. We got this piece right here. I'm not sure what this piece is called, but I'll leave all the information down in the description below. Look at this thing. It has this triangle piece right here. Frame washer and a, a knob screw here. And here we get two gears, triangle labs, two gear. And this we also have three extra gear and plus this threaded rod. And we get two rods, three bearings. This one has balls in there. What? That's so nice. And it's so small. And here we just have heated insert and screws. That's it with the small box. Man, everything here is so cool. This is the LDO motor. So it's from there. That's the company that make this motor. And I think this motor is a lot stronger and better than the original one that comes from the Cable Mac. And lots of people say that this is actually a lot better. And those people that have used it say that it is so much better. So in order for this project to work, you need to 3D print these pieces that I already did. This is printed in PETG carbon fiber. And this is just printing in normal PTG red. If I remember correctly, I think this is from a company named IEMI or something like that. And this is just regular PTG from Elegoo. This piece has lots of support, so I'm gonna get rid of the supports and then we're gonna go ahead and install everything and then we'll put it on the K1 Max. Let's go. Oh, and if I forgot to mention, I got this whole kit on AliExpress because on their websites for the US market is completely gone. I will leave a link down below if you are interested in this for your cable max. For in order for this project to work, you need a flathead screwdriver, you need Allen key or Allen wrench, and you need a soldering tools for the heat inserts. So first of all, we need to do the heat inserts for our parts here first. So what I'd like to do is, if the hole fits, there's like a small cutout at the bottom here. So you put it here and then you just heat press it in there. We're gonna do it perfectly, make it flush like that. It just go in very nicely. Next is to do the bearing. Okay, we need to smash this with something. So I have a tape measure here. I like to use my tape measure. This bottom, as you can see, I've been smashing things with this thing a lot. And it works really nicely. So I'm just going to do that with this one now. There we go. Press it flat. This thing is amazing. Okay, I think that sits really flat now. And look at the spins. Now we're gonna need this one, which is the one that the film comes in there. It's a filament driver gear. We're gonna need this one right here. I think it's the drive shaft. We're gonna need this big bearing right here. This bearing has a bigger side on one side. I think I might have to get myself one of these. So it goes in like this. Ooh, such a tight fit, nice. And then like this. We need to remove that a little bit. And now that's where this Allen key comes in. There we go. So that we can slide it in there like that. And I'm just gonna tie it up so that it does not want to get out. Let's go. Insert this here like this to the bearing back here. There we go. Be careful not to push out the bearing here. 
So usually you do it on a flat surface, it's so much better. And you hear that click, everything is perfectly aligned and can be rotated. Next is to use these bearings. This is that insert the bearing to the orbital gear, but I think they have already pre-inserted for us. As you can see here, these already have the bearing there, so we just need to put it in here. So it's this, not this way, it's this way. There we go. We got all three in there. This will be for the extruder. The extruder will go in the middle right here. And now we're using this cap right to do this. And this also has gearing. So it's like a planetary gear. Look at that. It looks so cool, right? Oh my gosh. But before we do that, we need to add some lubrication in here. But before we put the housing in there, I'm going to put some super lube in here just to get all the gears looped up and make us move lubrication really really helps good a good good amount so now let's put this housing in there let's do some rotation just to get everything looped up and now we can install the motor i think this motor is a lot stronger than the original motor this motor retracting speed is up to 120 millimeters per second acceleration up to 3000 millimeters per second square so i think it's so much better than the original motor so let's put it in here it's gonna be a perfect fit we just need to wiggle it around just do this so that everything gets lubed we need to add the screw we need to add one m330 and one m360 so the 30 goes down here and here i gotta make sure that i don't strip the thread here again I'm just gonna make it tight, not super duper tight. I can't believe this one goes through more than this one. Hmm. It looks weird. Now we need to use this other one here and put it in here. And that's where this next piece comes in. So let's see how this is gonna go. I think it's gonna go in like this. So let's just put it the correct way. We're just gonna be like this. You okay, know that we got this. We need putting this at the bottom here. And we need to screw it in, in there so that it sticks in there. And okay, now this is where the flat head screwdriver comes in. So we're just gonna have to keep throwing this until it's about 0.5 millimeter from the bottom. I have always hated flat head screwdriver man. They're so hard to work with. Okay, so we push it all the way through and back it up by a little bit. I think that should be about 0.5 millimeters. Okay, now we need to take a piece of filament like this and just insert it from the top so that it aligns with the filament teeth and into the tube down there. Okay, so let's put this filament in there and align it. And now this is aligned like this. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this locked in here tightly not over tightening it but just tighten up where it does not move anywhere else so i decided to just go with one color not two different colors i feel like this is so much better now we line this up with the film in there and we push this other pin at the bottom hole here just lightly tap it there we go Use this to push it all the way through, making sure that it's in the middle. So now we put in the tensioning screw, the spring first, and then the washer. Now go through here into the heat insert. Secure it in there like this. And if we pull the filament, I guess this will turn. Yes, it's very hard to do, but it is definitely turning. And I don't really advise doing this because it might ruin your extruder. But I'm just doing this for experimenting. And it works. We are pretty much set. But I have one extra bearing right here, which I cannot find a way to use it. One extra heat insert and one extra screw. And I looked through the manual two times, three times now, and there's no use for those. But it's good that they give you extra. So now let's go over to the kill max and put this thing in there. Okay, so in order to take this off, we need to take off this cover. And then there's two screws on the left here, one screw on the right here. 
Okay, now we can just take off the motor. So here's why I say that my motor sucks, okay? I cannot pull this lever anymore. I used to be able to do this and then it locks. You can pull out the filament. But now, if I do this, it just comes back. Because I shredded the threads in here or I screwed up the threads in here by tightening this way too much and now it's not working. So sometimes, you know, if the filament extrude, it does not have the power to hold the filaments together and then you get under extrusions. Oh, and of course, right, we need to take up this cover to remove the wires. We, we just wiggle, we can remove this whole thing out. There we go. Be very careful. Remove the wires from this clip. Oh, look at that. It came off. It's not lockable now, so. And I believe this is just a dropped in replacement. I still have the tube sitting down here. So I'm just gonna put this thing in there. There's like this little clip right here that is making contact with this piece right here. So you need to cut this off from your K1 Max. So it's pretty much permanent. So I guess I need to put this thing all the way in here. Okay, finally got this in there. It was a pain, but I finally got it in. Plug it in. Everything seems to be working. So put in the cover and we will give this a test. The old cover does not work with this one, but it's okay. This looks so much cooler. Okay, so I got everything set up for this Cyclop extruder. But there's one key thing that I have not seen this online anywhere. Or well, maybe there is, but I just have not searched well enough. I look at YouTube videos and people are doing this Cyclops build, but they did not mention this. And or the guide did not mention this. It's this top right here. So the top right here, well, what is this? This is where your filament is going to go. So it's going to go through there and then down to the extruder gear and then to this tube down here. For this one, I just used the original one that comes with the reality and it works pretty nicely it fits nicely in there but what i'm saying this is that there is no this thing on here and they didn't provide it in the kits so you need to buy this but i took this one off from <laughs> the original extruder here from the k1 max i took it off from here right there it was sitting right there and i pop it off it does not fit here and i cannot push it through in there even if i force it I feel like it's just gonna break but luckily for me i got these like a long time ago and i just put them in this plastic bag i got these a long time ago and did not use them i forgot what i even buy these for but hey i got it right i used my knife and carved the top a little bit to make the opening a little bit bigger then i'm gonna be using this 10 millimeter socket so that i can thread this in the cyclops easier i tried doing it by hand and it's very difficult so this fits really nicely to a 10 millimeter and then you just thread it in there so just make sure it's straight and then just put pressure turning and it will eventually slowly go in there and it's going to be a really tight fit and i broke it uh it's broken a little bit but i hope it's fine <laughs> no it's too big for it's too small for this one but and it seems fine nothing really bothered this part this part does not interact with anything so i feel like even though it cracked a little bit i think in the long run it's still gonna be fine so i'm just gonna stick with this and now i can put in the filament tube in there very nicely i love this new locked system without the blue clip it's so much better if you're gonna do this project you definitely need one of these adapter for the filament tube okay <clears throat> i got everything set up i'll be testing with this white pla filament i know you need to change some setting in the g codes but i just want to see if this will extrude first and yes, the motor is spinning. Let's go, it's working. Is it coming out? Yes, look at that, it's coming out. I think the motor is spinning backward. Oh no, no, there we go. Yeah, it's working, it's going. It's struggling though. I got it working and it is my fault. I forgot to change the setting on the K1 Max and therefore the motor did not operate properly. So now if we extrude again, it's working really smoothly very nicely 
very easily and look at that it's extruding out now it's so strong it is so so strong look at that oh my gosh it's extruding so fast and that is 35 millimeters per second that is extremely fast and if you just extrude 10 millimeters per second it just extrude very very smoothly look at that i can already tell that this motor is really a lot stronger than the previous or the original motor that comes with the cable max how did i know that because I manually extrude all the time and I always use 10 millimeters per second and I cannot get it to come out that fast when I do this I hear the motor struggling like clicking but for the cyclob one no clicking or anything like that they just extrude extremely well okay it's printing the first layer right now and seems that it's actually printed pretty nicely I got the cyclob extruder installed to the cable max I did run into a couple problems and a couple things that they did not mention in the guide. And I just quickly did a test print of this piece that is going to be coming in a future video. So if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. This thing turns out pretty well, but I feel like the layer lines here, I can definitely see the layer lines. It's not stacking that well. Well, this is the usual for the cable max. So at least I'm getting the 3D printers up and running and printing it again. The first layer seems pretty decent. White is not the best color, but I choose white. There are still some leftover filaments. I can definitely tell that the extruder is a lot stronger than the original one that comes on the cable max. But of course, I think, of course, it runs stronger because on the guide, it tells us to change the run current for the new extruder from 0.55 to 0.7. And I think that might be current for the new motor use more current so therefore the motor is a lot stronger rotating and the motor does get quite hot on the original one it doesn't get that hot even if you do like a one hour print it doesn't really get that hot you can still touch it afterwards but this one after just 30 minutes of printing this it gets super hot but it does not transfer the heat over to your printed parts or the filament tubes or the filament itself so the heat is really well kept at the motor itself overall i think this was a success project you just need to really follow the instructions until you get to the end and then do your testing but it's a good thing that i did not follow it and did my testing first so that i know the difference between after and before making all the changes onto your 3D printer's configurations. Well, that'll be it for this video of me installing the Cyclops extruder to the Cable Max. It's a really good extruder and I'm already in loving it. Installing new parts like this, a new upgrade like this, not the original one that comes with the 3D printer. I will need to redo all my calibrations like the flow rate, the pressure events, and all of the other tests that a 3D printer needs to go through, in my opinion, to get your 3D printed parts in a good quality that you actually enjoy seeing it print and after seeing it done. Leave a comment down below, have you installed this on your K1 Max or your K1 series or is your original motor still works fine? Leave a like on this video if you enjoy this video, subscribe to the channel for future projects like this and as always, keep on 3D printing. But before you leave, if you are in need of lithium ion batteries, check out my store right here, it's scratch3dbattery.store. You can choose from various type of connectors, T-plug, with a balanced charger or just a simple JST SM plug or if you need XT60 or XT30 it's also available with a balanced charger you can choose from various type of battery pack and connectors that suits your needs so once again if you need high quality lithium ion battery pack check out my store scratch3d battery.store there will be a link in the description down below and thank you so much